Hello everybody, this is PD at Burger Arcade at BurgerArcade.com and here we are again with another tutorial on a little hack and slash series. I know it has been a while since I've put one out. Uh, no, I'm not dead. Uh, I've just been a little bit busy and I'm going to be busy for the next couple months so I probably won't be getting a lot of tutorials out between now and probably sometime in June. Uh, but uh, there are a few things I wanted to clean up and I do have a bit of time today so I've gone ahead and I installed Unity on the new machine and I set the project up. So let's go ahead and actually just start it up. I've watched the last video or two. So I am a little familiar where we left off, but there are a few little things that I just wanted to fix up while I'm uh, catching up to what I've already done in the series. So uh, let's fix this one here first. So it's looking for a 3D text for the mob. And I remember that was the actual name that appeared above the mob. I still have to get it so that it rotates and faces the camera, but for now let's actually just add the 3D text to it. So if we double click that, that's going to open it up in Mono Develop. And we're in the mob script, and this is the line right here. So let's take a look to see if the display name is up. Uh, see, it's right here. So it's actually looking for a game object, or sorry, not a game object, a component called name. So that's, uh, let me see, I believe it's our personal guard. We have mobs, area, oh, that's the beach area, spawning ground. Yeah, it's the personal guard that we're actually making. So what I'm actually gonna do is just stop it. I'm gonna go ahead and open up resources. This is where I'm keeping all of my mobs. And right here is the personal guard mob. And I'm going to go ahead and just actually drag him into the scene here. So we'll just go ahead, we'll just throw him right here. And I'm going to add a component to it. And that'll be a 3D text. I'll just go ahead and drag that onto our mob. And here it is right here. I'm going to go ahead and name that name with a capital M. And where I'm getting that from is right here. So whatever you've set it up, if you're following along and doing everything like it is in the tutorials, then it will be named. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to leave it. Let's just change it to uh, a default value of name. Uh, the anchor I'm going to set to lower center. And let me see, I want the alignment to be center as well. Uh, let me zoom out a bit. I'm going to want to move it up above his head. And when I add the code later on to actually make it automatically rotate and face the camera, it'll appear the right way uh, instead of being backwards. But for now, I actually want to shrink the size of it down. So let me see. Font size, font style, character size right there. Uh, let's try half of that. Uh... That's fine. Let me see. Uh, let's try making it bold. It's still a little blurry, but I'm just using the default font. I'm sure there's probably a better font I could find for it. Let's actually shrink it down a bit more. All right, around there. So I'm going to go ahead, select the prefab, uh, the base component of it, and just hit apply. And of course, if we come down and click on it down here now, it should have that component attached to it. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Where are we? Oh, I'm sorry, I've got to open it up. It's not a component. It, well, it's not attached to that. We, it's right here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete him from my scene. Uh, we'll save that off. Uh, I'm going to hit clear. Great. That one's done. So next on the list, actually, let's just stick with the name part right now. Let's go see what it looks like. Um, let's see, we'll go in, we'll run over, we'll take a look at our mob. Um, I'm not seeing the name. Uh, well, let's select them. Let's see, we'll come over. There's our character. We're going to select the mob. I'll zoom in a bit on them. Like I said, it has been a while since I've played, so just bear with me for a bit here. 
Uh, so we do have the name showing up. Uh, whoa, okay. There's something I've made a mistake on. Um, I zeroed out its x-axis. Actually, I don't think I zeroed out any of its axes. I only adjusted the y. That's something we're going to actually have to do. But before I do that, let me figure out why it's not displaying. Uh, we're going to head over to our script. And so we're looking for name. We're going through. If we find it, ah, it turns it off. And we're actually calling it. We're actually setting the value to be uh, equal to uh, the slug mob. Now, this was actually a holdover from uh, the very first 10 series or very first 10 tutorials in the series. And we were doing it this way here because uh, we turned all the names off. And when we targeted them, they would turn them back on. That's not really the behavior I want anymore. I want the actual names to always be displayed and then maybe change the color or give some other indication of which one you actually have targeted. So we're going to be changing this a bit, but I do want to go in and actually fix the positioning of the name. So let me again, again, let me shrink this down. Grab my personal guard, drag him in, and there we go. The name is way behind him. Uh, we want to fix that. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to zero out the X and the Z. That way there it appears right above them. Now by default, I could rotate, uh, rotate 180 degrees to make it face the camera. But like I said, later on I want to address that with some code. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and resave that back off. So I'll hit apply and then we'll get rid of them. I'm going to start it back up and jump into my game scene. I just want to select them just to make sure the name is right where it's supposed to be. And it is. So let's go ahead. We'll stop that. And I'm going to come in and uncomment this or sorry, comment out this line. So now it should display by default. Uh, we'll go in and take a look. Sure enough, there it is. All right, so we'll go ahead and I actually want to add, well, let's start it back up. I believe, I guess the mob script would probably be the best spot to add that to. Yeah. And so the name is actually coming from the mob, mob script. I actually want to add a string here to allow you to actually give a name to the mob itself. Now, before... Uh, we're setting it up here. Let me actually go ahead and take a look at the mob class. Uh, right down here is where we're setting the name. So we could actually go ahead and uh, either get the name from the prefab itself, which would be personal guard. Uh, the problem is that when it instantiates, it's going to have that little clone in parentheses behind it because anytime you instantiate a prefab, you get the clone. But we could parse through and just remove that. Or we could actually just expose a, a variable in the inspector over here. Uh, let me see. We'll just go in. I want to come down here and where the name is. Uh, I'm just going to actually change this part here. So I'm just going to comment that for now. I'm going to come right underneath it and say name is equal to. And we'll just get the name of the prefab for now. So if we look up here, well actually we can just do game object. Uh, since this is the mob script and it's attached to the base uh, game object, uh, we can just say game object dot name. And that'll actually get the name of the game object. And then to set it, uh, since we have display name set as a transform, uh, we'll have to grab display name dot and can we get a component here yes we can from the transform the component we're going to want is i believe a text mesh let me just check here uh text mesh yes so text mesh right there uh, we'll close the generic off and the property we're going to want is the text and we're just going to sign that name value to it and we'll go ahead we'll save that off and it shows no errors uh unreachable code that's uh, in the ai script because that's because we have that we'll work on that in a different tutorial 
Well, let's clear that. We'll start it up. We'll jump right over to our guy. And there we go. And like I said, we could just parse that off. Uh, but this name variable, uh, let me get rid of this. Uh, it's coming from the base script, which was base character. So we'll just find that base character. And it was the name uh, right here. So it's just getting and setting uh, this value. Now, of course, I could just expose it up here. That'd be the quickest way to do it. And I think I will. So I'm just actually going to comment this out. I'm going to come up here where we have the name. I'm going to comment that as well. And I'm actually just going to make a public up here. And let me see, we're going to make it a string. And I'm just going to call it name. Now that means we are going to have to go through and change the variable name in a few spots, but that's fine. We'll go ahead, we'll save that off. I uh, head into our mob script and right here is where we're actually have to change it. And I'm actually just not going to bother because we can comment this out now because we're not using it anymore. And we'll just use this. Uh, so we'll have to go in, we'll have to actually select our personal guard. We're going to get a few errors here. Um, this is part of base character. Now we'll just comment that out. Um, uh, we're getting lots of errors here. But let me actually just come in and switch something here. Uh, right here. So we should get a variable exposed now. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Well, let's go see. Let's fix all these uh, errors. All right, next one. Next one. Right there. I probably should just do a global uh, finder in place, but we'll just go ahead. We'll just go through each one individually. There we go. Now let me come over here and look. Um, so we want to grab the personal guard. Let me shrink all this back up. Uh, the personal guard and name right here. And uh, I don't know, what are we going to call him? Let's just call him Joe. I uh, will start this up. Uh, we'll take a look at him. And there we go. So I could actually make two or three different instances of the personal guard and have each one have a different name. Uh, simply by adjusting this variable. Anyway, we're over our 10 minutes. I just wanted to start getting familiar with uh, creating tutorials again and also uh, do a little bit of an update in this series. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see everyone in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.